Mr. President, I take the floor to explain India's position on this resolution. In our world today, we are confronted with escalating geopolitical tensions and unequal developments, resulting in a concerning rise in intolerance, discrimination, and violence based on religion or belief. India, as a proud champion of pluralism, firmly upholds the principle of equal protection and promotion of all religions and all faiths. Our rich history as a pluralistic and democratic nation embracing diverse religions has long served as a refuge for those persecuted for their faith. Whether Zoroastrians, Buddhists, Jews, or adherents of any other belief, they have consistently found in India a sanctuary free from persecution or discrimination. At the heart of this ethos is our principle of Sarva Dharma Sambhava, encapsulating Indian secularism and affirming the inherent goodness of all religions, each deserving of equal respect. This principle isn't merely a facet of our culture, it is firmly enshrined within the Constitution of India. It is therefore with deep concern, Mr. President, that we observe the growing manifestation of intolerance, discrimination, and violence against followers of various religions. We condemn all acts motivated by anti-Semitism, Christianophobia, or Islamophobia. However, it is crucial to acknowledge that such phobias extend beyond the Abrahamic religions. Clear evidence shows that over decades, followers of non-Abrahamic religions have also been affected by religiophobia. This has led to the emergence of contemporary forms of religiophobia, particularly anti-Hindu, anti-Buddhist, and anti-Sikh elements. These contemporary forms of religiophobia are evident in the increasing attacks on religious places of worship, such as gurudwaras, monasteries and temples, as well as the spreading of hatred and disinformation against non-Abrahamic religions in many countries. The destruction of the Bamiyan Buddhas, violations of gurudwara premises, massacres of Sikh pilgrims in gurudwaras, attacks on temples, and the glorification of breaking idols in temples all contribute to the rise of contemporary forms of religiophobia against non-Abrahamic religions. It is crucial to recognize, Mr. President, that Hinduism, with over 1.2 billion followers, Buddhism, with more than 535 million, and Sikhism, with over 30 million followers worldwide, are all subject to religiophobia. It is time that we acknowledge the prevalence of religiophobia rather than just single out one. In this context, I would ask all member states to consider the broader scope of religious discrimination that persists globally. While the issue of Islamophobia is undoubtedly significant, we must acknowledge that other religions are also facing discrimination and violence. Allocating resources solely to combat Islamophobia while neglecting similar challenges faced by other faiths might inadvertently perpetuate a sense of exclusion and inequality. Moreover, the substantial budgetary implications of establishing such a position prompt us to pause and reflect on whether this is the most effective use of resources. Could we not achieve greater impact through a more inclusive approach that addresses religious discrimination in its entirety? Therefore, we are in principle opposed to the creation of the post of a special envoy on the basis of a special religion. We trust that the resolution adopted today does not establish a precedent that could result 
in numerous resolutions centered on phobias tied to specific religions, potentially dividing the United Nations into religious camps. It is crucial for the United Nations to maintain its stance above such religious concerns which have the potential to fragment us rather than unite us under the banner of peace and harmony, embracing the world as one global family. Mr. President, as I conclude, I will state that India stands against all forms of religiophobia, be it anti-Semitism, Christianophobia, Islamophobia, as we stand against all anti-Hindu, anti-Buddhist, and anti-Sikh sentiments. One final point, Mr. President. This concerns a delegation that, much like a broken record, remains sadly stagnant while the word progresses. It is unfortunate indeed to witness this delegation's limited and misguided perspective on matters relating to my country, the more so when the General Assembly considers a matter that demands wisdom, depth, and a global outlook from the entire membership, perhaps not the forte of this delegation. Thank you.